Hey everybody, I'm Stranger, just in case you didn't know, from Stranger Music. Now, I want to take a minute to thank everybody who has listened to my music already, and if you haven't, you can actually go to my website and download the whole album for free, strangermusic.org. Or, if you want to go on Spotify, Apple Music, iTunes, anything like that, you can just look up Stranger, and my album title is Minor Transformation. Um, again, it's totally free, though. Um, yeah. So, I wanted to make this video, though, because this is a really important time to me. Um, last year, at this time, changed my entire life. It totally set me on the track to start doing what I'm doing and put this album out and start writing music. And it, it's been unbelievable. So, I just kind of wanted to go over that story just a little bit and hopefully inspire somebody else to follow what they really know they really want to do you know, and believe in themselves, believe that they can do it and that they're worth it. So last year, starting back in January, it did not start well. It was awful. I was working a job I absolutely hated. It was miserable. Nobody really talked to me. I was by far the weirdest person that worked there. Um, it was cold. I mean, it's just awful. And one day as I'm walking like this three block walk to get in there in the freezing cold by myself, I get a phone call saying that my grandma was dying. I lost it. I had to go into work, tell her I could not work, her being my boss, and I had to go visit my grandma, and then that night, she died. It was awful. I was traumatized. A couple of days later, um, I got dumped. That was bad, too. Um, looking back on it, though, I mean, it was... It was going to happen, but it's just the timing was so awful. I was falling apart, and then we buried my grandma, and barely anybody talked to me and my family because I don't even think that some of them knew who I was. And if they did, you know, I'm kind of a elephant in the room with my family, which is okay. You know, it's whatever. Um, so I was just, for months, I couldn't pull it back together. I couldn't sleep. I couldn't eat. I mean, all the progress I was making on myself, it was just gone. Everything was just awful. Sorry, my cats are getting crazy. Um, then my parents split up, and I got stuck right in the middle of it. It was terrible. I mean, it was slow season at work. I was barely making any money. My parents were driving me crazy. I was still depressed. I couldn't do anything. I, was, I wasn't I was planning on living to the rest of 2017. I mean, it was, that was it. I was just like, okay. Well, <laughs> Looks like my time is done. And out of nowhere, my friend Julie messaged me when I was having a really rough time. And all it was is this, this digital poster of a pink concert in Lake City, New Jersey, coming up in July. And I was, like, thinking to myself, I'll start walking now. Like, I'll, I would do anything to see pink. I love her. She's been my role model since I was a kid, you know. Um, she saved my life on multiple occasion she was somebody I could look up to and relate to when I couldn't relate to anybody around me and nobody seemed to understand and she seemed like she cared more than some of the people that were in my everyday life you know and she had never even met me so I talked to Julie and she ended up getting us tickets to go and I lost my mind <laughs> I drove my sister out there and the second I even saw the pink billboard, I just lost my mind. I started crying. I was like, hold it together. And then we saw her doing sound check, and I was just like freaking out. I could not handle it. And a couple hours go by. We go get food. I could barely eat. I was so nervous. And a couple hours go by. A couple acts go by. She had two opening acts. And then finally, she comes on stage. And this is after I had been bonding with this woman who I'm now friends with, Christine, um, over how much Pink has really affected our lives, how much she was really there for us, and how much everything had changed with her music. And the second she came on stage, I just cried. I lost it. I could not hold it together. I was just in tears. And it was the most incredible experience of my life. But it was also so painful because it was like this growing pain of like, this expansion, just breathing life back into me, 
and it literally like physically hurt, but in like the best way possible, which sounds really messed up, but it's not like that. Um, so I made myself this promise that night that this is what I have to do. I wanted to do this since I was in first grade and I had first heard rap. I, w I fell in love with it. That was it. I knew I wanted to do it, but you know, parents were like, oh, be an artist or go in the military or do this or do that. And everybody's telling me who to be, what to be, what to do. And then me not even thinking I'm going to live through it on top of that just didn't make it sound like I was worth it. Not like it was worth it, but like I was worth it. And, but that was it. I had to do it. I knew I had to do it. And I knew I didn't have to just do it for me. I had to do it for everybody like me and everybody. I wanted to be that person that can affect people like she does, you know? So I go home the next day. I drive all the way across Pennsylvania, all the way across the other side of Ohio, right past my house. I drop my little sister off drive all the way back home, I was absolutely exhausted, but the next morning, I popped up at 8 o'clock in the morning, no alarm clock or anything, couldn't sleep in if I wanted to, drug myself outside, and I just went on a walk and started listening to music, and I was like, okay, I need to write something new, I've written one original song, it's not even that good, I've written a couple of remixes, but I can't do anything with those, so I need to come up with something. So, at one point, I got in my car, and I knew that if I stayed anywhere near my house, I would just go inside, and I'd turn on Netflix. So, I get in my car. All I took was my phone and my wallet, because I wanted to go get food. And I went out to the Walmart that had Subway. And I parked all the way at the farthest end of the parking lot. I turned the car off. It was the middle of July. It was hot. Rolled the windows up. Wouldn't turn the AC on wouldn't open the windows, would not allow myself to go inside and get food until I had written a song. I, I didn't even care if I was going to be late for work. I was going to write a song. And I found a beat I liked, and I just, and a couple lines popped in my head. I said, okay, we got a good start here. I just sat there thinking, and thinking, and thinking. I mean, I think it took like an hour and a half, and I wrote Phoenix. And if you have heard it, if you listen closely, you'll hear a lot of a lot of pink references throughout the song because it's not just about how I pulled myself together it's that moment of realization how she made me realize it was her music her and her music and her personality that made me realize I have to do this I have to stop making excuses I have to make the decision to go after this and nobody else can do it but me so I wrote the whole song I went in got food I've never felt so good in my life I was so ex well okay Besides, at the Pink concert, I was so excited. I just felt so accomplished and alive again. And I did that for the couple months afterward. I would go out, look for another instrumental that I could buy, and I would walk on this trail that was by our house. And I would go out to the furthest point on the trail, and there was this park bench there. And I would sit on the ground, and I'd use the bench as a table. And I had these mini notebooks, and I was going to write at least one verse. So I did that for three months and I wrote 10 songs when throughout my entire life I could never write one full original song. I wrote 10. Then at the end of October, I got the chance to not only see but meet Snow the Product at her concert in Toledo. I lost my mind again because she is one of the most influential lyricists to me, at least personally. Um, she's a super strong female in the rap industry and that's just incredible to me. I absolutely love her so much. So meeting her was just absolutely crazy. I you know, I can't even describe how insane that was. <clears throat> so the next day after meeting her, I, of course I couldn't help it. I wrote another song and I wrote Blood Sock, which was actually the single of my first album. And kind of similar to Phoenix, if you listen to that one, you'll hear a lot of Snow the Prog references, because that's who I'm talking to. I said, you know, hey, let's talk. Like, we're pretty like-minded. Let's talk about some deep shit, you know. And I worked so hard and saved up so much money that I could record every two weeks 
and our recording is not exactly cheap for anybody who doesn't it's not cheap at all it's paying like 500 to 750 dollars a month on recording and you know mixing mastering production all that good stuff and on top of all my bills you know christmas um any other random expenses I had going on, I was paying for all of that stuff. Just so that I could put out this first album. And I worked so hard. And I studied, I was like, okay, well, what do I need to do next? Because I can't pay anybody to do these things. I have to do these things myself, you know? So, I went on and I came up with the idea for a logo. I had somebody made it, make it for me. And... I was like, okay, now what am I going to do with all this stuff? I got a photo shoot done. I was like, okay, now where am I going to put it? And I looked up how to build a website, found a place to um, host it, then learned about layouts and themes and colors and what I need. I made it and remade it and remade it and remade it and redid it and redid it, and then I bought the domain. And everything was just starting to come together. Um, then I learned about distribution right before I release the first album so now I've got my music on you know obviously YouTube SoundCloud my website obviously but now I've got it on Spotify iTunes iHeartRadio um, Deezer Napster all of these different platforms that I never would have thought I would have my stuff on you know it's crazy in less than a year from deciding to do it, I already had a website, I had a photo shoot done, I had professional recorded album that was on all these different platforms for people to hear all over the world. Absolutely insane. I actually, after that, not too long after that at all, um, began writing my second album. So now in this time, <laughs> I'm recording and producing, you know, co-producing my second album. And I actually accidentally, I guess, accidentally started writing my third album. And it's only been one year now. I never would have thought, given where I was last year in January, or even June for that matter, that I'd be doing this now. I mean, now I'm actually screen printing t-shirts in my house to get ready for the Philadelphia Trans Wellness Conference. I'm actually hand printing all of these by myself, which I taught myself how to do it. I had no idea how to make t-shirts, and I'm bulk ordering them. I've got CDs coming. I've got bracelets. I've got business cards. I've got some other fun stuff. We're recording our music vi first music video. I'm setting up, um, getting a costume worked on for my second album photo shoot. I'm getting my EPK put out there for four performances. Um, it's crazy. I mean, you could not have told me, even at the be you know, the beginning of July, that I'd be doing this in a year. I mean, it's just absolutely insane to me, you know. <sighs> I still can't believe it. Like, it's crazy. But I just, I, don't know, I want everybody to realize, you know, those things are temporary. I mean, I didn't even see myself living for much longer, and now I have everything to live for. I realize that now, and then this music has made me realize that the people who listen to it and sit, you know, they can relate. They understand it. It's something new to them. It's a new perspective, and that that helps people. What is there not to live for then? You know. I need to keep doing this, I need to keep going, and change the world, you know, that, I've, you know, I've kind of decided that, like, I don't believe I can change the world, but what I do believe is that I can teach the world how to change itself, and leave it with the choice to do so. But even then, you know, that's enough. Sometimes saving the world just means saving yourself. And the rest will come later. But just know that you're worth it. And everything will work out. Don't cut your time short. You cut your time short, you might be cutting somebody else's time short as well.
keep going. Don't quit your day job.